So, yeah. Okay, so we. Yeah, so, what about that one? On Zoom as well. We still have James Ryan. Is he here? Yeah. Is James here? Okay. A couple of people were actually going to be on Zoom, but I'm not sure. Is James James not here, is he? Oh, James, you're far away, mate. I thought you were... Uh, oh, sorry. The other person, Sandamil. Sandamali. Okay, welcome. Thank you. Uh, shall I wait for Sandamali to come online? It, it, was Sandamali able to join on Zoom? I understand she can't speak, but I think she was... Um, You'll be able to hear us. You won't be able to say anything. Is that right? That must be her in the black square. Ah, oh, right, okay. <laughs> there we go. She's online. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Um, good morning, um, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to Property Council submission on the annual plan today. Um, I'm James Riddick, and I'm the chair of um, the South Island branch of Property Council. Um, I'd also like to introduce uh, Sandy Marley Gunawardena um, from Property Council's advocacy team. Um, I do understand that she uh, hasn't had, is unable to have a speaking role today, so um, she's the brains of the operation in terms of the advocacy team. So I hope you bear that in mind with the technical questions. Um, but she does tell me she'll be able to uh, liaise with me if needed by text. Um, property is the largest industry in Canterbury. Um, there are around $160 billion uh, in property assets across Canterbury. Um, with property providing a direct contribution to GDP of 14%, um, along with employment for 31,000 Canterbury residents. Uh, in broad terms, um, we support the overall direction of this year's annual plan, um, with the exception of a few proposals, um, which I'll touch on today. Uh, the first of these is expanding the vacant sites rating differential. Um, and the proposal to extend this to, to the commercially zoned areas of New Brighton, Littleton, Sydenham and Linwood. When the vacant site differential was first introduced last year, uh, members understood the need to uh, beautify the CBD and to ensure that vacant sites do not have a negative impact on the amenity of the city and on demand generally. However, imposing a differential was, and in our view is still, not the solution. One of the continued concerns that our members face is that there are a multitude of reasons as to why sites may be vacant or appear vacant. For example, there could be an, inab an inability to secure an anchor tenant um, for a development or a situation where there are development plans on a vacant site, but it remains vacant uh, in the short term due to timeline sequencing within a portfolio. New Zealand's a small market and it's unlikely that the same types of development will occur at the same time in the same city especially when there are market constraints um, such as available capital um, and the uh, ongoing skill shortages uh, and supply chain issues uh, exacerbated by the lingering effects of COVID. The proposal to extend the vacant differential will place additional costs on owners and developers in a time of increased costs across the board. Uh, and we consider that this will likely have the opposite effect as council intends uh, through the loss in smaller landowners um, and the variety in buildings and amenities across Christchurch. Turning now to the increase uh, to the business rating differential, um, we were disappointed to see the council has proposed an increase in the differential from 1.697 to 2.22. Uh, rating differentials do not explicitly account for or demonstrate the services consumed by businesses or the direct benefit to businesses of the increased rates burden. Average commercial values uh, have, have increased by 24% when compared to the 47% for residential. Um, this is seen by council as justifying the increase in the business differential. Um, in our view, this is not rational, and the comparative capital gain in the revaluation should also be considered by council in setting the rating differential. From this perspective, there's no justification for the increase. Furthermore, uh, an increase to the business rating differential is only one of the many costs the commercial sector is facing. This cumulative impact will not promote Christchurch as a place to invest and develop. Based on this, we recommend that the uh, business differential is not increased uh, and instead an independent report be commissioned by council to analyse the proposed rating differential and its economic impact. It's vital that council adopts a model that is fair and equitable across all rate payers. Um, finally, uh, regarding the annual general rate, um, Property Council supports option A. Um, this, in our view, will ensure a better spread of rates across Christchurch residents and businesses. In conclusion, while we support aspects of this year's annual plan, there are some changes that Council should make to ensure that its decisions do not result in unintended consequences, 
of increasing the cost of development and therefore driving away future investment within the city. Um, thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak today um, and very welcome of any questions on this. Thank you. Um, very clear of what you've uh, said. Thank you very much. Anyone got any? Yeah, Tyler? Good on, mate. Hi. Uh, outside of, outside of um, obviously extending that, that, that race charge, what, what would incentivise developers to, to build um, on vacant sites? Uh, look, I mean, a lot of it's, um, in our view, with the um, vacant uh, differential, the problem with that is it sort of, uh, it, it pushed development at a time when it wasn't necessarily um, commercially viable, so it sort of in some ways incentivised bad development. Um, it, it, the, the, the biggest driver for it is the market, um, and the market at the moment is, is, I mean, in Christchurch it's starting to turn around given the um, vacancy rates, we are actually seeing some development. Um, a couple of other things on that front, um, certainty, including around transport, and you probably would have heard from a few developers locally um, around some of these sort of central city transport changes. Um, and just having certainty for investment to enable them to actually make decisions about where to actually do, uh, where, where to actually carry out the developments. Um, and the other side of that as well um, is the um, one of the other points we commented on in our submission um, related to the um, development contribution um, policy uh, and the sort of expiry of the 10-year period. Um, so I think there's scope for a conversation to be had between the um, development sector and um, council and property council is very happy to facilitate that just around um, w what would be the ideal model for that. Um, and I, I accept um, keeping it open indefinitely is not going to incentivise development either, but um, the recognition that, um, well, I guess the recognition of two things. One, COVID had a huge impact on, um, well, on the entire country, um, including development in the city. Um, and also the impact of that in terms of cost and viability and everything else. Um, so that would be a, a, a useful tool to extend it as well. Um, plus the other thing as well with the uh, with development in the central city, it was always intended that that would be catalysed by the anchor project. So the you know the single biggest thing that could be done to um, catalyse development in the city is getting those things uh, concluded as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, and thanks very much for coming in. Okay, thank you very much.